So we've been getting a lot of questions on how can we increase muscle mass? How can we get anabolic? How can we get bigger? And what we ended up doing is putting together a 12 week muscle mass building program. This is including five days of training where we get legs, upper body, arm day, and a leg day and an arm day. So we got five days a week. We got a nutrition program included. So you know what macros you need to be hitting to be anabolic and get those muscle mass gains and included is also a mobility program to make sure your joints stay nice and limber. If you like this, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter, head over to grindstrength.com and pick up that muscle mass program. Peace. What's up everybody, I'm Dane from Garage Strength and we are gonna cover what we value and what we perceive to be the absolute best way to increase your muscle mass based off nutrition and recovery from those crazy training sessions that you're gonna be doing while you're hammering that 12 week mass building program that you can get at garagestrength.com. So let's start off right away. We know what happens from a physiological perspective. You've watched the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy of video. You've watched the video on what best exercises you need to do down below. You can click on if you wanna watch those again. And we understand the hormonal response that goes in to recovery from this crazy training that's gonna to lead to a massive increase in your muscle mass. But now we need to understand the nutrition that goes into enhancing that recovery so that you optimally can build that muscle mass and start to actually fill out those t-shirts that you've got. So what I like to do is I like to sit here and figure out from the perspective of being anabolic and being um, and, and, and also being healthy, we want to look at what percentage or, or what is the ratio per pound of body weight that we want to take in as far as grams of carbohydrates grams of protein and grams of fat. And we need to recognize that carbs are not bad. We know that anaerobic glycolysis fuels most of the reps and set ranges that we're gonna be working in if we wanna increase muscle mass, especially if we're focusing on sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. But also, if we are working towards myofibrillar hypertrophy, glucose plays a significant role, okay? So we know that carbs aren't bad. We know that protein's not bad because we are going to be, our hormones are going to be um, mobilizing the amino acids from our protein consumption so that we can recover and we do feel good and our brain does feel stimulated. So we know that from this outside global nutritional aspect, we know that protein is essential for recovery. Fats are not bad. So we have to take a step back and realize that fats and carbs Neither one of them is bad. We need to understand that they are, bro they are both part of a very healthy nutritional system. And as long as we are maintaining a proper balance in our calories that we're, that we're using throughout a day versus the calories that we're bringing in, and as long as the ratio is according to that lean muscle mass, you know, that we're going to develop lean muscle mass based off the proper ratio, Fats, carbohydrates, and protein are all excellent sources that play this big part in a, in a puzzle of nutrition to lead to this lean muscle mass growth. So diving right into it with the carbohydrates, we've got 1.8 grams per pound of body weight. So I wanted to use, if we had an individual who was 220 pounds, right? So 220 pound person, I don't know if this marker has anything, and they're going to eat 3,000 calories a day. This is, pretty, this is pretty realistic and pretty simple to do. They're going to eat 3,000 calories a day. For them to optimize 3,000 calories, for them to optimize their training over, over the three to, four, three to five meals a day eating periods, they're going, to be, they're going to be focused on getting 400 grams of carbohydrates. So some people think that's absurdly high. Some people think that's actually normal and maybe even a little bit low. That's going to contribute to 1,600 total calories. Okay? So to increase, to make sure that our body is, especially if we're in that sar sarcoplasmic hypertrophy range, we know that every gram of glycogen that goes into our, our muscle cell pulls in three grams of water and that's going to lead to this tremendous increase in muscle mass if we're talking simply about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Carbs plays a huge role 
and fueling that training session and making sure that you have that training session at a, at a nice long uh, duration and you can work out for 45 to 60 minutes and put out a significant amount of work. That's where carbohydrates come into play. And it doesn't, we, if we're eating well over three to five meals, we don't have to focus too much on what we're eating pre-workout as long as we're eating well throughout the day. Okay, so what I like to do is my top six sources of carbohydrates, and sometimes it'll, it'll be different from this, is rice, rice, banana, and I like basmati rice, I like jasmine rice, um, sometimes sushi rice, I like white rice, banana, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Now I prefer potatoes to be boiled. Um, there is some evidence that, that uh, boiled potatoes can, if you boil them and cool them and boil them and cool them, it, when you digest them, your, your gut will uh, convert this to uh, uh, something called butyrate, which can, which can actually improve um, the, the makeup of your gut flora. So I do like to, to boil those potatoes, um, oatmeal, sometimes corn. I like corn tortillas. I think they're great. I think it, it, it's a classic way to be uh, metabolic or anabolic all the time. Sweet potatoes I love because of, of all this. And we've got to remember that I want to push nutrient dense uh, food sources. So these six, these six food sources, rice, banana, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, and corn, those are great ways of getting your carbohydrates in throughout the day, getting those 400 grams, which is going to lead to 1600 calories and fueling your training session. Now, if you wanted to add in oranges, apples, I think they're great as well. This is just my preference, okay? Protein source. So we want to work with complete proteins. That means that all of the essential amino acids are in that complete protein, that are, are present in that protein. And any animal protein, so any animal meat, muscle meat from an animal, is going to be a complete protein. On top of that, getting whey protein and eggs, those are also great sources. Some vegan products, they, they will take a, a combination of hemp protein or quinoa protein, and they can create that complete protein. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to in, ingest a quite a bit more total protein to make sure that the essential amino acid balance is present and that you might end up eating a little bit more calories. I prefer focusing on things like steaks, burger, any, any beef, um, as long as, I, ideally it would be from grass-fed meats, um, chicken, turkey, fish, all of these are great sources. So I would say on top of that, whey protein, casein protein, if you can't digest whey protein, beef powder protein, anything that has that complete source is important. You don't, whey is extremely, extremely easy to oxidize from the muscles, right? So if I had 40 to 50 grams post-workout, I'm gonna utilize that very quickly. If I struggle to digest whey, if, if I'm lactose intolerant, use beet protein. It's, it's, it's great, okay? So we've gotta remember going back to uh, our hormone uh, video that you can watch down below. If we think about the, the hormones that are being used to metabolize uh, amino acids or to, to mobilize amino acids, we gotta think about IGF-1 and we gotta think about MGF, mechanical growth factor. As long as we're taking in protein throughout the day, and we're post-workout, post within that 72 hour window, we will be at a heightened state of mobilized amino acids, so our recovery is gonna be off the charts, and I believe uh, with the protein, one gram per pound of body weight, so that would be about two grams per kilo of body weight. Some people will say that's slightly high. Uh, most research on normal athletes will show 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilo of body weight which is why I lean more towards that two to 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight or one gram per pound of body weight. So that's gonna give us 880 calories, which will leave us with about 600 calories left. And that's where we're gonna get this from our fats. So fats are not bad. Dairy products are great for protein. They're great for fats. They're great for carbohydrates especially if we, we, you know, recently in 2020 now, uh, a professor, a researcher, uh, Via Verde just came out with a, a study where they studied, I believe it was about 41,000 uh, people who, who consumed dairy products. Dairy had no negative impact on hypertension. That no, it was not correlated to hypertension, high blood pressure. So we know that dairy is safe. So use dairy if you can digest it for protein, for carbohydrates, for fats, 
because it's a great source of all three of these uh, macros, right? I love animal fats. Um, I love coconut oil, butter, another animal fat, ghee. Um, I recommend from a fat perspective, staying away from polyunsaturated fatty acids. So staying away from safflower oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil. I believe you should absolutely 100% stay away from those fats and focus more on uh, macadamia oil, or olive oil, coconut oil, animal fats, and butter. I think you're perfectly safe with that. And as long as you're around 0.3 grams per pound of body weight, this might be slightly low, but if we wanna increase serious muscle mass and keep our body composition around the same, this could be slightly higher at 0.4 grams, but then we're probably gonna take away a little bit of the carbohydrates, okay? So I like to, to balance this out to about 585 to 600 calories. Now that gets to, to 3,000. Remember, animal fats, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, those are the best fats. Animal protein, some vegan proteins, whey, whey protein, eggs, anything that's complete. And then we got rice, banana, potato, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, and sometimes corn. And that will make up the nutrition that we want as we eat throughout the day, throughout three to five different meals, okay? You eat that throughout the day, you do the proper training, you follow the 12 week program that we have at garagestrength.com available for you so that you can increase your muscle mass and all of a sudden you're gonna to start to fill out those short shirts, you're gonna feel a little bit more confident, you're gonna see that bench press rise up, that back squat's gonna to continue to increase and you're gonna be happy with those results. If you like this content, like, subscribe, share, ring the notification bell, you can share this all over Facebook, put it on your Instagram, let that content keep flowing from garagestrength.com. We've got tons of information on our blog. We're going to link everything down below. Peace.